guys how to pull a drift. Now, most of the time I do a suspend drift, but you might hear drifting called uh, bumping, dragging, strolling, something like that. All of those names are pretty much uh, the same thing. They're all a form of drifting. And yeah, I'm gonna teach you guys how I do it and teach you guys some of the nuances of some of the other techniques and when one might be useful over another. All right, so the first couple of things to consider whenever you're gonna pull drift, no matter how you're gonna do it, whether it's suspended, dragging, or what have you, the main thing you have to be concerned with is boat control. So being able to maintain the position of your boat, being able to maintain your depth, stay on a ridge line, whatever you happen to be suspending over or drifting across, you need to make sure that you can control your boat and keep it over that. Now to do that, you have a couple of options. Number one, you can drift with the current. Uh, you have nice, steady, stable current and everything is you know, really easy for you that day. Those are very rare conditions, but sometimes it happens. You can just let the current in the river or let the wind push you along uh, the piece of structure or piece of cover that you're trying to drift to. Another option, and the primary one for most fishermen who fish from a boat, is to utilize a trolling motor. Now you can do it with a foot pedal or you can do it with a remote like I do. It doesn't really matter. Uh, just make sure you're staying on top of that piece of structure. Make sure you're staying on that depth where you found those fish or staying on that depth where you suspect there's fish because, you know, fish finders can't see everything. Uh, Technology is improving, but you know, we can't, we can't yet see every single fish we're targeting. Another thing, if you can help it, do not drift blind. Now, when I say drift blind, I mean pulling a drift over an area without knowing where the depth changes are, where the pieces of cover are in the water that you might run into, and stuff like that. If you have the time, or if you can help it, Make sure you uh, make sure you stroll over the area that you plan to drift and get a good feel for the bottom. And if you spot anything, mark it on your sonar. That way, if you drift over, or as you're drifting over it, as you come up on it, you know you can react to it before you even get there, and it'll save you a lot of frustration. Another major thing to consider when you're drifting is your speed. So your speed of your drift should be based on the fish. And that's more often than not going to be based on the water temperature. So for me, uh, the range that I use is cold water, anything, anything lower than 55 degrees, I'm going to drift between 0.2 and 0.2. 6.7 miles an hour. I'm not going to go any faster than that because those fish are going to be feeding more slowly. They're going to be less apt to take a bait. But if it lingers in front of them long enough, they might just take it down on reaction or just because, hey, it's a free meal and it's in the way. I'm going to take it. If I'm fishing warmer water like we have today and it's roughly 86 degrees, so anything above 55, I'm going to drift whatever speed the fish are wanting. More often than not, that is between 0.5 and 1.5 miles an hour. The sweet spot for me seems to be about 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Uh, but like I said, it's depth and temperature dependent. Some of those things change up a little bit as you go throughout your day. Uh, adapt and adjust to your fish. All right, so suspend drifting, the technique that I use, what is it? Uh, suspend drifting is whenever you have your lines directly under your boat. Uh, or directly below you. You cast out your line just a little bit away from the boat just so your leader doesn't spin around your main line. Let it drift down until it hits the bottom, reel it a few feet off the bottom, set it in the rod holder and off you go. Uh, use a heavy enough sinker so that the line stays straight down. Uh, base that weight on your drift speed or the current speed. Uh, you don't want the line to be swaying back with the current or with your movement. So today I have no current, so I'm actually using my trolling motor to pull myself along. I'm moving about 0.6 miles an hour right now, and I'm monitoring both my front 
fish finder and my rear fish finder solely for depth. I'm not necessarily looking for fish. I'm just making sure I stay on that track line that I already marked out and maintaining that depth that I'm on. Bumping. So bumping is usually done with a rod in hand, not a rod in the rod holder. And the reason for that is the risk of snags and losing your gear. Now, when you bump, you're dropping the sinker all the way down to the bottom, and you reel it up just enough so that it's the bait is still probably fluttering right around the bottom. The sinker is not quite touching, but it's right there. And anytime you feel it come in contact with the bottom, you kind of you know lift your rod tip up a little bit, and then once it's not anymore, you kind of lower it down more gradual. And that's generally what's considered bumping. If fishing is really slow, I will resort to bumping all of my rods and the rod holders. Uh, I lose a lot of tackle that way, but I also catch a lot of fish that way. So it might be something worth trying if suspend drifting, keeping it up off the bottom is not working for you and you need to be fishing multiple rods and can't have them all in hand for a proper bumping practice. All right, so the next technique is dragging. So if you're gonna drag, it means you're going to pull your baits along the bottom. Um, and that's generally only done in a still body of water or a zero current situation in your river. And the reason for that is if you try to drag baits through a river that's flowing, the current is going to cause you a lot of problems with keeping your lines dragging along the bottom without spinning or turning on themselves because you're going to try to drag them at a certain speed and the current is going to try to push them probably in the opposite direction that you're trying to drag. So, still water conditions, lakes, uh, ponds, uh, you can drag out of secondary rivers, tributary arms and stuff, out into a main river and it can be quite effective sometimes as long as the flow for that tributary is slow enough. Also, whenever you're dragging, the sinker setup and everything needs to be a little bit different. You use a dragging weight, which is either a long, skinny, tubular weight or you need to use like a pencil weight. So it's a long stick shaped weight, usually tied onto a three-way rig. I don't have one set up right now. When I get back to the house, I'll set a couple of these things up, show you guys firsthand. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, you can use a drift sock if you like. Uh, I use a drift anchor sometimes to pull one, set or one side of my boat faster than the other. Uh, just because the current tends to try to turn you around and if I throw one off the back I can actually get my boat to drift completely sideways which is my preferred method. Uh, it doesn't work in all situations the current has to be just right but it's always nice to have that drift anchor around. Wait one I'll show you guys what one looks like. So this is my drift anchor. Uh, this is a 36 inch drift anchor. They are very inexpensive if you get smaller ones like this. You can get some that are absolutely enormous. But this thing will open up in the water and provide a little more drag in the area that I want. So if you're fishing on a lake and you're letting the wind drift you, you can use these to slow you down. If you are on a river, you can anchor up and use this to help pull the rear of your boat straight, or you can use it in the current to pull one end of your boat faster than the other so that you can stay angled a certain direction to your preference. If you use a larger drift sock, make sure you take use of this little tab down here on the end of the drift sock and tie a small line to it and run it up to the same connection as your larger lines and run it along the main line so that you can pull it. A large drift sock is going to have a lot of drag on it and they can be very difficult to pull through the water. So tying a small line to this so you can pull it from the rear and kind of dump it in the water will make it a lot easier to retrieve. Alright, so let's talk about rigs just a little bit. Typically, when pulling a drift, I use a normal Carolina rig like this. 
So leader going up to a sliding sinker, uh, swivel sliding sinker that I can attach either onto a slide or directly onto the line. Now you can use whatever sinker type you prefer. One thing I want to make clear though is in current, shorten your leaders if you're going to drift, uh, particularly if you're going to suspend drift. Catfish are not line shy. Uh, striper generally are not line shy. The things you're going to target while suspend drifting, for the most part, are not line shy. If you're going to do like some deep water suspend drifting for lake trout or something like that, just tackle accordingly. But drifting is a common catfish technique. It's what I always use it for. And catfish aren't line shy, so shorten those leaders. They're not going to care if they can see that sinker that deep down, that dark that murky of water they probably can't see that sinker anyway so shorten up those leaders and it'll prevent a lot of line twists and a lot of tangles it'll also save you from having to wonder if hey I pulled my sinker up off the bottom a couple of turns did I pull my hook up far enough off the far enough up off the bottom because obviously that can get snagged up and tangled too another thing you can do if you have pretty extreme currents or you're trying to drift faster than normal, you can tie something called a knocker rig. A knocker rig is when you have essentially no space between your sinker and your hook. Your sinker will slide straight down to your hook. Whenever I tie a knocker rig, I put about three or four plastic or glass beads in between the sinker and the hook. And that's just to protect my knot and give it just a little bit of space. It usually only gives it about an inch or two of space, uh, separation between the two. That still keeps that weight straight down on top of that bait, allowing me to drift a little bit faster while giving me that offset that just makes me feel more comfortable about that catfish getting that hook in the corner of the mouth. All right, final notes on drift fishing. My final piece of advice for drift fishing, try it. It is an extremely effective form of fishing. It's more active, you get to stay more engaged, so people with shorter attention spans won't get bored as easily. And when it comes to spawning fish or heavily dispersed fish, there's really no better tactic for finding them or keying in and forcing that strike than using some form of drifting technique. Uh, now if you guys would like to see a little bit more information, a little more elaboration on how drifting is done, make sure to leave me a comment down below. Hey everyone, thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I left the link for you right there. If you still need your outdoor fix, we've got another video for you and its link is right there. Thank you so much for your support and we'll catch you next time on RSG Outdoors.